Greetings. Colonel Thomas Blood here, ready to regale you with a tale of audacity, deception, and a heist that still echoes through the annals of history. Prepare for a wild journey through my past. But first, I am told I have been, ahem, resurrected merely for likes and follows. So please like and follow or subscribe as I now owe my new life to that. Anyways back to me. I came into this world in 1618, in Ireland's Emerald County Clare. My early years were marked by tumult, as I found myself embroiled in the English Civil War. I began as a supporter of King Charles I, but as the tide turned, I found myself fighting for Oliver Cromwell. As a reward for my services, Cromwell granted me a sizable estate in Ireland. Life was good, until 1660 when the monarchy was restored, and my lands were taken away. Now, I had a bone to pick. With the loss of my lands, my resentment grew. I even attempted to kidnap the Duke of Ormond and storm Dublin Castle, but let's just say those plans didn't pan out. It was then that I hatched a plan that would etch my name in the history books, the theft of the crown jewels of England. My plan was as daring as it was deceptive. I adopted the guise of a parson named Dr. Thomas Ayliffe, and made multiple visits to the Tower of London with a woman posing as my wife and another as my niece. Over time, I befriended the keeper of the jewels, the elderly Talbot Edwards, even going so far as to promise his son my niece's hand in marriage. On May 9, 1671, I, along with my accomplices, visited the Tower under the pretext of introducing the rest of the family to Edwards. Once inside the jewel house, we seized our chance. We clapped a cloak over Edwards, struck him with a mallet, and bound him, gagging his mouth with a wooden plug. With Edwards incapacitated, we turned our attention to the jewels. I personally used a mallet to flatten St. Edward's crown, it was more malleable than I expected. My accomplice, a rough-hewn rogue, sawed the scepter in half to make it easier to transport. The third, a man of exceptional daring, stuffed the royal orb down his breeches. A royal pain, I'd imagine. Our escape was not as smooth as planned. Edward's daughter-in-law returned unexpectedly and raised the alarm. We bolted, trying to escape the tower's grounds. I was mere steps from freedom when I was seized, the flattened crown still in my possession. Captured and awaiting my fate, I was surprisingly summoned by King Charles II. His curiosity had been piqued by my audacious heist. We had a long conversation, at the end of which, instead of ordering my execution, he issued a royal pardon. But the surprise didn't end there, he granted me a generous pension and returned my estates in Ireland. And so, my friends, concludes my incredible journey, from disgruntled landowner to infamous jewel thief to pardon pensioner. Now, you might be wondering why the king pardoned such a notorious scoundrel. Well, let's indulge in some speculation, shall we? Some say Charles II was amused by my audacity, while others suggest he admired my rebellious spirit, a reflection of his own youth perhaps. A more cynical theory is that the king hoped to avoid the scandal and public trial that would inevitably focus on the security, or lack thereof, of the crown jewels. By pardoning me, he neatly swept the whole affair under the rug. Whichever theory you prefer, the fact remains that I walked away from the crime of the century, not just a free man, but a richer one. And that, my friends, is the crowning achievement of my audacious life. Thanks for watching my story. Please share me with your friends.